Do you like the look of foil on your Christmas cards? It's luxurious and I've got five ideas to share with you today. Hello, welcome back. It's time for another In My Same But Different Christmas card series in 2021. Today is all about foiling and in particular, I'm gonna be doing some hot foiling. So I've got two different ways to share hot foiling with you and we're gonna be making five cards and having lots of fun along the way, finding out what to do and what not to do. <laughs> so we better get started. So I've got three different foils that I'll be using today. The one on the right here is a Heidi Swap Heat Reactive. It works with the Mink Machine and the pink and gold is what gave me inspiration for today's colors. And these other two, one is from the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill, and that's the gold one. And the pink one is from the Go Press and Foil. And I haven't tried these two with my Gemini foil press yet, but we're going to do that today and see how we go. Now I want to start off with the laminator style um, heat activated foils. And there's a few different ways that you can do it. I have a product here which is called a transfer gel now there's another two products that have been brought out this is the original one but the other one on the left is a duo so that works with cold and also heat activated so you can use that without having to have a laminator and the one on the right is blanco and that just has a white base so you can use that on colored cardstock but we'll get to those another day <laughs> I thought I'd just go with my original transfer gel because I knew I was going to use heat and this will only work with heat activated or through a laminator. I sh basically covered my whole stencil here and scraped away any excess. Now I wasn't getting a nice flat finish which I know I'll need to get a good look with the foil so I did come in with my stencil pal because that will give me a nice smooth finish. Then I could just remove my stencil. This is the Castle Motifs from Alta New and it has really cool flowers and it looks like poinsettias. Now I've got this product here. It's from Heidi Swap and they are sheets that have toner patterns on them so they're made to go through a heat laminator like the Mink machine. And the sandwich I've used for this was the cardstock, the piece to be laminated and then the foil pretty side up. And I haven't had a lot of success with these particular um, patterns with my laminator and the foil that I was using. So I was really interested to see how this would go using the proper foil and the proper mink machine. And oh my gosh, look at that. That is foiled perfection there. <laughs> <laughs> so while I was playing around with that I did allow my uh, stencil pattern to dry like for the transfer gel and then I'm doing exactly the same thing so I've got a carrier sheet that I'm running these through I am adding a shim of cardstock I probably didn't need to do this um, you can just use a carrier sheet like a folded over piece of copy paper um, or some parchment paper and then I just ran that through my mink machine on setting four. And this is the stencil version. And I wasn't really sure how it's going to go because this did stick on the outside. <laughs> but it turned out so well. How pretty is this pattern? You can see a few scrapes um, from where I did use my palette knife. But it turned out really beautiful. Alright, so now let's try some backgrounds using the Gemini Foil Press. No, it didn't work. I have used um, Pinkfresh Studio foil um, stamps or plates before with really good success on my Nina cardstock. Um, so that's what I was using there. I was trying Nina cardstock and only one sh you know like with no shims of cardstock so what I did this time was actually used a smoother white cardstock that I have in my stash I upped the temperature to the middle um, 
temperature on the Gemini foil press and added a shim of cardstock. Let it cook for 15 seconds and then I ran it through my die cutting machine. So the final sandwich I used was the hot foil plate, the hot foil pretty side down, my cardstock, the cardstock shim and then the top plate. And this plate here is gorgeous. It's like I said, it's a pink fresh studio one and it's the diamond pattern and I used the pink go foil press and it just, the impression was just gorgeous. If you don't have any smooth cardstock and it's not working with your Nina, I would suggest you use a piece of Yupo because you will always get excellent results on a Yupo. The shinier the cardstock, the better the result. So this time I've got the We Are Memory Keepers gold um, foil. It's the foil quill version and I've done exactly the same. I didn't stray from the plan. I left it at that middle temperature with the extra shim and it worked out beautiful as well. And then <laughs> I decided to do a sentiment and this is one of the ones from Alan Hudson. It's a jingle all the way and I've used these before and never had any problems. So what I've decided it was the foil and I have read somewhere that with the Gemini foil press foil you can get away with the lowest setting of heat but I'm finding with these other foils that I've bought because I'm having trouble buying these foils in Australia like to get the colors that I want that are the paper foils I'm having to just get whatever brands in the colors that I want and I was actually treating this like it was the Gemini foil press foil and that worked beautifully on the Nina with the Allen Hudson stamps but um, this foil stamp and this particular foil did need the extra shim and the extra bit of heat and as you can see here did it work Yes, woohoo! There was one tiny little area that didn't work so well. And I'm going to be using these negative spaces of foil uh, down the track. I can use my plate that came with my Gemini foil press to use those negative portions so I haven't thrown them away. I also grabbed some sentiments here and foiled them while I was at it, and they're from the Spellbinders Mini Christmas sentiment strips. And here's all my finished backgrounds and sentiments. All that shiny goodness. I just love it. And we do have to make these into some cards. Now if you don't have a laminator or a hot foil machine then you still can get the foiling look. And I did do a live video not very long ago where I shared a few different ways that you can do that. So if you Want to check that out? I have linked that in the video description below. So I kept my cards really clean and simple today. I wanted the foiling to be the main event and I have cut a portion of the castle motifs stencil out. I did decide to run it through my uh, Sizzix Big Shot machine just because I was a bit concerned that my gem and I would put too much pressure on that gel and squish it down and I didn't want that to happen. Now I have Heat Embossed a Sentiment which is from the Penny Black Christmas Moments stamp set and die cut that with a heart and while I was cutting that out I did also die cut a uh, Penny Black, um, it's a stag, ready for one of the other cards. You'll see which one very soon. I popped up the panel on the front of the card and also the sentiment and then just added a few jewels and how awesome is that shimmer and shine. See if you look close you can see a couple of those scrapes but I was really impressed that the um, stencil pal really did help smooth out that gel. Now here's the card that I'm going to add the stag to. I've cut down the stripey panel and added it to the front of the card and I decided to cut a second stag colored in the eye and join them together just to give it a little bit more strength. You could actually keep layering this up and just use that on the front of the card but I wanted that um, 
background bit not to be visible so I simply just added some foam tape to the back of mine added a sentiment which is from the Penny Black set Here's to Christmas and that deer actually it comes from the set called Together I will link the products that I've used in today's video whichever ones are still available I'll link them in the description below otherwise you can always email me in the comments if you've got any questions and I'll see if I'll be able to help you there and hopefully I can um, answer them for you the jingle all the way card I added a, a cute little polar bear and it's an MFT uh, image from the Merry Moments set and I've die cut an arch shaped card around the sentiment added some strong tape here it's just a bit of score tape to the top and that's just going to help me create a shaped card base around that sentiment this is probably the most simple card today but I really think that sentiment is the highlight I did come in and add a few gold uh, rhinestones from Uniquely Creative which I think look really sweet it looks so happy that polar bear <laughs> it makes me smile I am coloring a couple more images here they're both from MFTs one's from the same set as the polar bear the other one the Santa is from Jingle All The Way which was a retired set but I think I saw that it's been re-released this year which I'm really happy about because it's a fabulous set and I didn't have the coordinating dies for that one so I did have to cut him out but he's not hard to cut out but uh, it does remind me that I do like my coordinating dies <laughs> I'm getting too lazy to fussy cut now I do like to keep my images in place and restamp after I finish my coloring so that way I can get some nice crisp pigment ink on those images so and I used another die it's the waffle flowers I just use these A2 layers dies all the time even if I'm just covering the whole front of a card I'll often just get the uh, five and a quarter by uh, four and a quarter by five and a half <laughs> die to cut out for the front of the card it's just easier and I used one of my little um, sentiments from Spellbinders with the Santa I think he looks cute in pink <laughs> and this diamonds I actually used the whole um, I covered the whole front of the card with it and then cut down one of the sentiments um, from the mini sentiment um, mini Christmas sentiment strips just so that I could add a little bit of um, fun to the sentiment and I ran the whole thing down the front of the card it's really easy and fun to do they're not complicated cards you can certainly change up your foiling if you don't have these machines um, head to that uh, video that I was telling you about the one that I'll link in the description below and also at the end of this video I'm going to link a couple more Christmas videos from my previous years to inspire you hopefully give you some more ideas for your holiday cards and I know there's a falling one in there somewhere I'll see if I can find it <laughs> thanks so much for joining me here today until next time happy paper crafting bye <laughs>